Okay, so tell me the answer for this question. We studied it last time in the class. Does so the mean... woman need to undo the braid on her hair? Yes. Bath after menstruation? Yes. Correct answer. Then next question, what is the bath of Janaba? The bath of Janaba is the um, ritual bath after uh, intercourse. How to perform the bath of Janaba? Yes, the okay. The bath of the naba is performed with water, uh, with the niya, starting from the head and cleansing the entire body, then performing wudu. You have missed the third part. So we wash the private parts with our left hand, then we make wudu. Yeah. Then we pour water from the right side of the head to the bottom of the feet. And the most important part, the water must touch the whole body, especially the joints, okay? Mr. MK, can you hear us? I can hear. Okay, read this. The English text. Yes, English text. <laughs> Help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or oppressed. Yes. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, help your brother whether he is an oppressor or oppressed. It was said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I help him when he is oppressed. But how can I help him when he oppresses? He said, prevent him from oppression. That is your help from him, for him. Okay, so here we will write a question. What is the meaning of the Hadith? Help your brother whether whether WHH whether he is an oppressor oppressor <laughs> or he is oppressed the question we have today is what is the meaning of the hadith help your brother whether he is an oppressor or whether he is oppressed. So it means, write the answer. It means if he is an oppressor, we will stop him from oppressing the others. 
it means if he is an oppressor then we will stop him from oppressing the others and if he is oppressed then we will try to take him out of the oppression and if he is oppressed then we will save him from oppression so this mean whether muslims are oppressed in palestine kashmir or burma wherever they are oppressed it is our duty to help them as much as we can as a nation it is our duty to help them as much as we can mr jibril what is the meaning of the hadith help your brother whether he is an oppressor or whether he is oppressed mr mk okay so my my understanding is that if he is an oppressor if he is oppressing other people yeah. we should stop him from oppressing other people good and if he is being oppressed we should find a way to free him from the oppressor good and another thing that i said about the people of palestine kashmir rohingya what about them it is our duty write this also it is our duty to help the oppressed people of palestine syria kashmir rohingya as much as we can so mr jubi repeat the last sentence it is our duty mr mk yes repeat the last sentence it is our duty it is it is our duty to help the people who suffer in kashmir rohingya and the other prison as like, much as we can. yes correct yeah now read this is anyone here read this yeah yes yes can i read it yes chapter 69 whoever comes to the door of the sultan you will suffer a fitna do i read the arabic or the english would don't should i read sir on arabic or english okay sir. english it was narrated from ibn abbas that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever resides in the deserts he becomes ignorant whoever follows game he becomes headless and whoever come to the door of the sultan he will suffer a fitna hasan okay so here we have multiple questions that we need to write so give me a second what will happen to those who live in desert
what will happen to those who live in deserts so the answer is they will become ignorant with time with the passage of time they will become ignorant so we need to avoid live residents in deserts listen the whole answer again with the passage of time they will become ignorant so we need to avoid residents in the deserts mr mk what is the answer of for this question yes. uh, the answer is the one who reside in a desert uh, those who, dis who reside in the, in, in the desert will become ignorant so we have to increase the settlement so as people can get the knowledge we need to avoid residence in the desert okay yeah so we need to live in a place which is away from the deserts second thing here we have is hunting so whoever follows a game game mean hunting animal as a fun many people do this so here we will write what will happen to those who follow the game basically what will happen to those who hunt animals what will happen to those who follow or chase the game game mean hunting animals okay this is the not the other game sport sport is a game is different thing and this game is different thing hunt the animals what will happen to those who follow or chase the game chasing the game means hunting the animals so they will become heedless they will become heedless so oh, can you explain i have not understood it about this word. that word headless heedless okay heedless mean the one who is you can say in english not on the right path okay okay care, careless about the religious matters careless about the religious matters so i will write this again so the question is what will happen to those who hunt animals for fun the answer is they will become heedless they will become heedless in the bracket right heedless mean neglectful in religious matters heedless means neglectful in religious matters mr jubir what is the answer for this question can you hear me or not no, I, now i can hear you 
So what is the answer for question number three? He says, what will, the question is, what will happen to those who follow or chase game? That is, those who hunt for animals. Yeah. He said they will become kidless in, in religious mean? matters. So they will have no direction. Yes, correct. Heedless means neglectful, okay? Mm. This is the exact meaning of heedless, which means neglectful in religious matter. Then we have the next question. So, what will happen to those who go to politicians for worldly benefit? Or just we will write. What will happen to those who go to politicians? What will happen to those who go to politicians? The answer for this is they will suffer a fitna. They will suffer a fitna. Now the question is what is fitna? We have written this fitna in previous classes. Can anyone tell me the meaning of it now? Or shall I tell you again? Okay, let me tell you again. Fitna means anything which takes you little away from the religion. Fitna means anything which makes you neglectful in religious matters. Halal things can also become a fitna. Halal things can also become a fitna like children, job, these are halal things. They can also become a fitna. So now Mr. MK, yeah. what is the answer for this question? Number four. Those who go to the politician doors will face the fitna. And what is fitna? Fitna to to go astray from the from the straight path. Um, yes, anything which takes you away from the religion, which makes you neglectful in religion, can halal things become a fitna for you? No. <laughs> yes. 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 Even the halal things like your job is a halal thing. Your University, your college, these are also halal things. Your children, these are also halal things. They can also become a fitna for you. Okay? Even halal things okay. sometimes become fitna for you. Next, Mr. MK, read this. <clears throat> Studying and daring to taqwa of Allah during the victory and the AIDS. AIDS. Abdurrahman bin Abdul, Abdullah bin Masood narrated from his father that he heard the messenger of Allah say, Indeed, you shall be aided, capturing and the victorious. So, who, whoever, whoever among you is that when he when let him the taqwa 
then let him the taqwa of Allah and let him command the good and forbid the evil. And whoever lies among me on purpose, then let him take his seat in the fire. So here we have two things. Whenever we uh, get some power, some victories, it is our duty to command the good and forbid the evil. Okay, so whenever we get some power, some authority, it is our duty to command the good and forbid the evil. Second thing is intentionally telling a lie about the Hadith or Prophet Sallallahu that person will be in the hellfire. We don't, we will not add any question from here. Next, Mr. Zubrid, read this. Oh, sorry, sir. Yes. Uh, I ask your permission. The time of Salatul Maghrib here is rich. So. Okay, no problem. You can go for Salatul Maghrib. Okay. I will send the recording in the group, inshallah. Mr. Jibreel, do you have Salah in your country or it is different time? It's different time. I'm in Nigeria. Okay. Then I will pray Asr already. Okay, good. So it was narrated that Ibn Umar said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever swears, let him not swear by anything other than Allah. The Quraysh used to swear by their forefathers. And so he said, do not swear by your forefathers. So here we have a question. Can we swear on anyone's name? E.g. parents, forefathers, children, etc. Can we swear on anyone name, e.g. our parents, our forefather, our children, etc.? The answer is no. We no. can only swear, swear by Allah by Almighty Allah. or by the name of Allah Almighty. So the answer is no. We can only swear by the name of Allah, Allah. Almighty. And there's another of these which tells us that we need to avoid swearing. So no. At the moment, does this answer is enough? No, we cannot swear by anyone except the name of Allah Almighty. So what is the answer for question number five? We cannot swear yeah. by anybody's name other than the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. Give me a second, let me charge my laptop. Yes, let me have this. I'll read this one. I'll read this one. All right, sir. Yahya Bena Abu Ishaq said, a man from Banu Grifar told me, is the guardian of Salim Ben Abdullah. Salim Ben Abdullah said, I hear Abdullah that that is Ibn Umar say, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah forbid you to swear by your forefathers. 
the same question is repeated in this or this. Can we yes, swear by the anyone name? No, we cannot swear by anyone name except the name of Allah Almighty. Now read this. Now read now, this. Chapter 5, swearing by one's forefather. Can I read this, sir? Yes, read this. Swearing by one's forefather. It was narrated from Salim, from his father, that on one occasion, the Prophet وسلم, had Umar saying, by my forefather, by my father, and by my mother. He said, Allah forbid you to swear by your forefather. Umar said, by Allah, I never swore by them again. Whether saying it for myself, or reporting it of others. So same thing is repeated that we cannot swear by anyone's name except the name of Allah Almighty. Yeah. Okay. Same question yeah. repeated in this. Mr. Muhammad, can you hear us? Mr. Muhammad, I think not available. So, Mr. Jibri, read this. Now, it is permissible to mortgage an animal used for riding. Yes, no. Or milking. Mogira narrated that Ibrahim said one can ride and milk the lost animal in proportion to the amount of food one gives to it. This is valid also for a mortgaged animal. Narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, one can ride the mortgaged animal because of what one spend on it, and one can drink the milk. Milk of a milch animal. Milk of a milched animal as long as it is mortgaged. So first thing, do you know what is mortgage? Yes. Can you tell me what is mortgage? Mortgage is a, a what mortgage is a property in this address is a property that is placed uh, to borrow money. Yes, so we can say a uh, security of the loan is called mortgage, okay? Yeah, like a collateral. Yes, yeah, security of the loan is called mortgage. So let's suppose I visit you and I ask you for a loan of around $100. So in yeah. reply, you say, um, uh, give me your uh, cow as a security. So I will give you my cow and you will keep this cow with you until I return you this amount. Mm. So here the question is, can you use this cow for your benefit like milk of this cow for yourself? Yes, from the, yeah, from the hadith, yes. Yes, according to the hadith, you can make use, you can take benefit from this cow because you are feeding the cow, you are protecting the cow as that you will take the full advantage from the cow. And when I will return you this money, you will return the cow to me. Okay. We, I think you are living in the city. Am I right? So we are yes, I am. in the city. So we will not write any question here. We will understand it. That is enough. All right. Now read this. Okay, sir. Narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the mortgage animal can be used for riding as long as it is fed. And the milk of the milk animal 
can be drunk according to what one spend on it. The one who rides the animal or drink its milk should provide the expenditure. So same question is repeated here. Can you take benefit of the um, animal which is given in mortgage to you? The answer is yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now read this. Narrated by Aisha, Rode Allah wa anha. Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bought some food stuff from a Jew and mortgage is armor to him. So here we have a question. Can we give our weapons in mortgage to Jews? Can we give our... No need to write any question from here, just for understanding. Yes, Can we give our weapons as a mortgage to the Jews? The answer is yes. Okay. okay. A practical example is this during these days. It is often heard that some countries offer loan to Pakistan for nuclear weapons. So may Allah protect us. I mean I what yeah. I thought I thought nuke, nuke, uh, Pakistan is already a nuclear power. Yes. So what is the situation? They offer loan if they uh, leave these weapons. So that is the situation. Okay. Okay. So next we have the hadith of the Yamum. I think we better start it next time, inshallah. These questions are enough for today. If you have right, a question, sir. you can ask me. No, it's fine. It's fine by me. How's your health, sir? Alhamdulillah, great. How is your health? Alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to increase your health. Amen. Okay. See you next time, inshallah. Masalam. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Amen. 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 Amen.